Well, we'll get through this, uh, this last piece before lunch. Everybody's been sitting very attentively, and, uh, and I appreciate it. And we'll get through this in probably about 35 minutes. As I started preparing for this talk about compounding pharmacies in the law, I thought it was important for us to gain some perspective and insight into the path of pharmacy over the last 100 years. And as we venture into the current landscape of pharmaceutical compounding and the FDA, I want you to be aware of what a pharmacy was like early in the 1900s and the standard practices of the time. The first photo is of a hospital pharmacy. Uh, this one's actually in France, as I was searching for pictures to find early pharmacies. Even though it's from outside of the United States, it is typical of a, an early 1900 pharmacy in the United States. This was a time when manufactured, mass-produced medication was unheard of. Everything was made from raw chemicals, weighed and mixed to the doctor's specifications for an individual patient. This next photo is uh, late 1800s. It's actually a dispensary, and you know it, it looks nothing like a pharmacy looks today as you walk into it. The jars on the shelf in the background are a further reminder of the nature of pharmacy before the Industrial Revolution. On the screen right now, you can see two prescriptions that were written in the summer of 1924 by a Dr. J.N. Rizjord of Fertile, Minnesota. This town, Fertile, Minnesota, happens to be where I grew up. It's in Fertile, Minnesota, 800 people, northwestern Minnesota. The two prescriptions that you see on the top, if you can read them, the one on the left says Melvin Scanson, the one on the right says Anton Moan. They just happen to be, respectively, my great uncle and my great grandfather. I found these prescriptions from uh, records in the little town where I, where I grew up. I'm friends with uh, a pharmacist that his grandfather was the pharmacist in town at that time. So they're very interesting. They look quite a bit different than, than what you would see today coming out of a doctor's office. My great uncle Melvin and great grandfather Anton lived about five miles apart at the time that these prescriptions uh, were written. And they both worked on small farms that were typical of the day. If you can see on the bottom, if I can find my pointer, or you can see the date on the bottom right-hand corner that, that talks about June 6th, 1924, and June 7th, 1924. Uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, they were uh, two days apart. So as, as I look at the prescriptions, I think, I wonder what was going on with them or what was going on in the town of Fertile at that time. Robin is uh, delivering some copies of these prescriptions around to you so you can get a closer look at those. Uh, if we have time at the end of the talk, we'll, uh, we'll see who can best decode these prescriptions. As a hint, the, the ingredients, they seem to point to an upset stomach and some slight fever or some pain. I'm almost thinking it was, it was possibly a, a, a late night at the local watering hole with uh, my great uncle and great grandfather, and they were probably talking about whose crop was greener and, and whose livestock was healthier. I know that this prescription is, is a little bit hard to read, and yes, if, if you can believe it, doctors had terrible handwriting back then too. <laughs> to make matters worse, this prescription is written in pencil. And it's on blue prescription pad, so I, I really don't know what was going on there. It was a good thing that uh, my good friend David's great-grandfather, Nels Vosenden, being the owner and only pharmacist at his pharmacy, was the only one commissioned to interpret this prescription. The significance of this script is that it, it really demonstrates how prior to 1938, a majority and Practically all prescriptions were compounded. 
So this is really the roots of, of where pharmacy has come from, even though we don't think of that today as we see what pharmacy is. The old-time pharmacist would take raw ingredients for each prescription and then compound a liquid, a pill, a powder, or actually a powder paper is what this prescription is for, and, or a tablet specifically for that individual patient. The powder paper is an interesting thing because has anyone seen what a powder paper looks like? Ever? Actually, I'm going to have Robin hand out one more thing that's just going to be passed down the rows. These are what powder papers look like and how this prescription would have, would have shown up uh, to, to my relatives back in 1924. If you look carefully on the bottom of this prescription also, you can see uh, on the very bottom line, and if everybody has copies now too, it's, it actually says this prescription is carefully compounded from pure drugs only. One more reminder that, that pharmacy was all about compounding from raw ingredients uh, pre-1938. With the advent of industrialization, there was an increase in manufacturing and mechanization. And with this increase, there was a shift in ideas about pharmaceuticals. There was a shift from the individual prescription for the individual patient to a mass-produced uh, set dosage form of four, five, or seven different dosages for the people. <clears throat> 